Welcome to Fire Your Boss Fridays, the podcast that's all about taking control of your destiny, stealing your life back, firing your boss, and living a life full of purpose. I'm your host, Chad Pesa, and along my side is my favorite rebel soul, Lisa Hart. Today, we have an extraordinary guest, Joe Rare. What a cool name, man. The underground serial entrepreneur, investor, outsourcing expert, and true advocate of remote work and flexibility. Am I right by saying all that, Joe? I, I believe so. I mean, I think uh, that's, that's the general description of me, I guess. <laughs> well, we did ask, how do we introduce Joe? How, how, does a, how do we get a guy like this, and, and what do we say, right? And why don't you say hi to our listeners and uh, tell us a little bit about what drew you to Fire Your Boss Fridays, our podcast, and, and why you had submitted an application, just so we have an understanding what you're after. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. You know, the, just the title by itself is like everything I live for. And so, you know, I, my team's obviously looking for opportunities to jump on podcasts, kind of share what we do, why I kind of do things, how I do them, uh, which is a little kind of backwards to most people. Um, e even the concept of, you know, firing your boss and so forth, it, it's, it's still a concept. A lot of people don't, uh, you know, don't uh, follow truly. And so freedom to me is the kind of the name of the game. And I think the concept of firing your boss, I think the idea of doing your own thing on your terms is really, really valuable. I think the challenge is, do people get stuck in a different boss situation where maybe you're your own boss, but you just created a new job. And so for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it's really, it, it's about creating actual freedom, both financially and uh, time freedom and to seriously do what you want. And I've, I've, I feel like a self-proclaimed master at it. And, um, we've, you know, now we're onto our sixth company and it's working pretty darn well. Oh, that's awesome. Well, we are super stoked. Oh, go ahead, Lisa. Yeah, I have away. to tell you, I'm so excited to have you here because I think kind of what you just described is a lot of me. Like I create jobs okay. for myself, you know, so <laughs> I, I need to get in the realm yeah. of like outsourcing and handing stuff off to other people. I'm not very good at it. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that could be my, my game. Let's do <laughs> it. <laughs> well, we're going to humble ourselves today. I'm excited. And all you listeners out there, this is going to be a huge benefit for you as well, because it's not something just some people struggle with. I see this more often than not, obviously within ourselves, but you know, out in the world, it's, it's hard to scale or make anything huge when you feel like you're the only one doing any work. So yeah, it's, it's going to be awesome. I'm super stoked for this episode. Uh, your dedication to re remote work, Joe, and flexibility is super inspiring. How did you first embrace this idea? Like we're in, we're in that yeah. stage right now where we're kind of embracing the idea of virtual teams and this uh, approach. We're going we're gonna to just go ahead and coin it. One of the things, one of our principles is steal your life back. And maybe we could use this as an oh, example nice. of like stealing your life back from your own business and achieving greater work-life balance. Could you tap into like where you made that critical move or some, some feelings you had at that point you can share with the listeners? Yeah. So, uh, actually it's a little less magical because I copied <laughs> the concept. Uh, you know, I read the four hour work week okay. after being in a situation where financially, um, I kind of crushed myself. You know, I had a, um, uh, a business that I had sold. I got myself into real estate and then, uh, the market crashed in 08 mm -hmm. and I was kind of left, okay, what am I going to do from here? And the what am I going to do from here situation turned into, well, I found this book, The 4-Hour Workweek. A buddy of mine actually uh, shared it with me. Mm -hmm. And and then I said, you know, I, I think this is it. You know, I read the book once. I said, I think this is, this is something I can dig into. And so I decided to dedicate the next, I forget how many months it was, to sit down and actually build a business literally page by page. Ooh, and I wow. Mean, I I'm so stoked nothing. that you just said that, man. That's heavy. Yeah. And, and the so manifest. it was cool. It was, uh, yeah, right? I mean, it, and, and it, was, uh, it was challenging because there were so many concepts that were foreign to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but one of the concepts that really made life easy was the idea of using virtual staff. Mm. And so I dug in deep. Um, I made it my life. This is how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to operate. And so I built an e-commerce business uh, using virtual assistants. Mm -hmm. It let me travel around and hang out with friends and, 
you know, go down to Costa Rica and just surf and be a nomad. Mm -hmm. Um, I did that for quite a while. So from 2009 to 2014 was kind of it. And then, um, yeah, then the one piece of advice in the book I did not follow to a T was Tim Ferriss says, do not sell ingestibles like supplements. Mm. Mm-hmm. And of course I chose a supplement. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you just, but it was all page, great. Right. Yeah. 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 It, it was, it was great while it was great. And then the FDA came in and decided, nah, we're not going to let, you know, health products be, you know, this, this particular health product. Uh-huh. So that pummeled the business in literally a day. I woke up. Uh-huh. And was it was HCG? Yes, it oh was. Oh my gosh. How you did nailed you it, know Lise? that? We had a client. I, had, I, had, I had a client had the same thing happen to him. <laughs> so funny. We, uh, I actually, I mean, we went, we went full tilt. Then we got into like herbs and we got into all of these tinctures and really down this like, you know, uh, supplemental health path. Mm-hmm. And it was phenomenal. And the company was doing fantastic. Mm-hmm. I wasn't working at all. It was, it was great. And then, uh, yeah, then the FDA came in and said, nope. That, yeah, uh, they, that you're not alone. That, so the real estate crash got you. The FDA got you. Oh yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah. You want to talk failures? Hold right. on. I can. I can give you a laundry list. Yeah. Well, it's, can it's we a big can one. we play with this just for a minute, my friend? We were in. The, I was in real estate too. Lisa and I've been in real estate for some time. I'm a general contractor for some time as well. That real estate crash. I remember, Lisa. Remember, I was felt all depressed. Like, oh, I failed. Oh man, I should have worked hard. <laughs> a lot of that wasn't actually. It was your dad actually, Lisa, that told me. He goes, you know you didn't make the market crash. You were doing yeah. what you yeah. did. You were doing it right. You were investing. You were, you know, as a contractor doing the work, you were doing the right thing. Like that wasn't your failure. Right. And so that was, I went, cause I was kind of depressed, right? I lost everything. And then yeah. I was like, okay, well that wasn't my fault. And at that moment, thankfully your dad said that to me, just one sentence. I'm like, you're right. Like I actually didn't personally fail. Right. Like right. way beyond my control. Right. We have to remember what's in our control. And like in same in your case, man, like the FDA, mm-hmm. like that was out of your control technically. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I woke up one morning and uh, my payment processor sent me an email and basically just said, yeah, you can't process payments anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, how does this work? And so then you start going on. down the rabbit hole and you realize like how deep, how deep the oversight power actually is mm-hmm. where they tell the banks, mm-hmm. cut it. Because it's easy for them to say you can't sell a product. It's a different game when they go, well, no, you can't process payments. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Like a now you're out of it's like being at Metallica and they just literally pull the electrical plug. 100%. Like, yeah. it's over. Concert's over. Go home. Game over. Dump your beers uh, out yeah. and get out. And, <laughs> and they, you know, there's a lot of people who now you see it like with sensor culture, right? That mm-hmm. they just literally cut their, ho- their website hosting. Oh, I know. Yep. And it's what like, does this teach you, though? Yeah, it just cut your livelihood right off. Yeah. Joe, what does this teach you though? Like when Own you're your building shit. a business, this is something we should probably play <laughs> yeah. with. Don't you Own think? your stuff. O- right? Own as much of it as you can. Yeah. So mm-hmm. the more you have outside leverage, uh, with other, other places, um, and the less you own, I mean, so it's kind of the, the one thing that, that I was able to take from it is go, okay, own your email list, your, your, mm-hmm. your database, own that. Listen up folks. Don't leave it inside Facebook. Don't leave it inside the platforms. No. Nope. So no if you're platforms. living, if you're living, Kajabi, this baby, whatever, exactly. Don't leave it it doesn't there. matter what it is. You know, you better be religious about pulling your database out because again, it can be cut in a second. Mm-hmm. Now, if you have a database and then you can pivot to something similar, you can, you can re-leverage that same database. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's an opportunity and we just actually used our database to launch a new business. Just literally, we we just launched it over the past thirty days, and um, it's been interesting because it's you know it's one of the first times that I I really went from zero to like mm-hmm. let's build something using an existing list that way, and and mm. so that's been pretty it's been pretty interesting. This is your that, first but. one of those like what would you do if everything if you everything had to shut cut down all your social media? There yeah, you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, and we don't even have we have no Facebook page for it. We have mm-hmm. no Instagram. We have no, there's zero social media presence of this brand. And we just launched it and we're almost to hundred grand a month. Do we get to, do we wow. get to sneak peek or what, what, what do we got you launching? What's, <laughs> dude, you got us on our yeah. toes. Oh, oh, What's yeah. going on? I, I, I'll share it with you guys. It's uh, it's called visitormatch.com. So it, it's not like I invented this. It's simply, I found the gap in the market where there's value to be had. It's, quite simply, uh, anonymous visitors hit your website. You have no idea who they are. Mm -hmm. 
we take that data through a pixel and then we mm-hmm. match it to existing profiles where we buy big data. Okay. We match it to existing profiles and we give you the contact information of the people who hit your website. Sign me up. Yeah, <laughs> Sign me exactly. Up. Sign me up. And Sign it's pretty up. rad. So the couple ways that we go to, use all it, you have to do is go to the watering holes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the way that we leverage it in our businesses is, uh, you know, somebody will match and then we automatically load them into our CRM. We also externally pull the data. So we have it external, mm-hmm. uh, but we, we actually load them into our marketing automation software, send out cold email that says, Hey, thank you so much for visiting our website. Did you get a chance to see X, Y, Z click mm-hmm. here? If they click, it goes to our sales team, our sales team, then picks up the phone and calls them mm-hmm. if they're not on the do not call list, which we actually have that filtered. Sure. But simultaneously though, we take that audience, those people, we put them back in the ad platforms and because the data is rich, right? Mm-hmm. There's more data points. Yeah. The ad platforms love it and it reduces our, you know, basically cost our, our cost mm-hmm. per lead by about 35%. Mm-hmm. All the revisit wow. or the re, re, what do they call it? Uh, well, it's retargeting essentially, yeah. but mm-hmm. we're not using their pixel because right. their data is worse than ours. And so since we have better data than Facebook, we just cool. use our data. That's awesome. So, so anyway, is, this a, that's, is this a service or is this just what service. you're doing? Yeah, no, this is a service. We actually, I started it because I, I, you know, I have an agency where we mm-hmm. run uh, <clears throat> a marketing system that we built in the wedding industry for okay. wedding venues. Okay. So we have hundreds of clients in that. And I said, you know, there's a gap where we could, as we've been watching ad costs rise, everybody's spending the same amount on ads and they're getting less results. And that's just a cost situation. Mm -hmm. So I go to our clients and I say, Hey, we're going to try something. We're going to see if we can increase your results with the same ad spend. And so instantly 35% lift instantly. Hmm. And I went, okay, we're onto something. So then over 30 days, I proved it to them. And then Mm -hmm. I chart, then I increased their rate and I charged them more money. So now we have, we have more margin. And mm-hmm. then I said, okay, this is like a real thing. And then, so I started, you know, really making it a big deal and offering it to every single client that we have. Mm-hmm. And then I said, okay, that's one, that's, that's one, you know, uh, niche that we could go after. Mm-hmm. Let's try it with level nine virtuals clients. Okay. So we did that, launched that another hit. And now we're going, okay, now we go retail and we actually sell it to the general public. Cool. Wow. Good work, man. So, yeah. So it's pretty sweet. Well played, Joe. Well yeah. played. Yeah. Po- yes. Poker face right there, right? <laughs> so cool. Cool. And then you have a team. Come on, you have not everyone's virtual, right? You got some Everybody. buddies like everybody's everything. virtual. So well, this virtual, is your ma- like, this So are they virtual like contracted or you don't have like any employees or like you know so I have people that are two... actually on staff? No, so I have two W two employees in my company. One of mm-hmm. them is my finance manager who's been with me through all of my nonsense. Mm -hmm. Um, everything I've, I've succeeded and failed with, he's been there. So he's Mm -hmm. on, he's on payroll. He always has been. And then I actually have my sister works in level nine virtual as my client success manager. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Cool. And that's it. Everybody else is, everybody else is completely contracted outsourced. Nice. Cool. That's, awesome. that's awesome, man. We want to tap into that. That's kind of where we're at. And that's another reason we were super excited to have you on, you know, yeah. for our business model, we got, um, well, we help people become remote and virtual as well, but like right. through uh, bookkeeping is one of many things Love that it. we want to tap into. And Lisa and I for like, uh, 14, 15 years, right? Lisa, we, we were, had established this remote bookkeeping company. We were able to travel as well. We didn't do as much surfing. Lisa didn't do any, I tried it out. <laughs> uh, Costa Rica, Florida, you know, all that kind of yeah. stuff. But so say, for, for example, let's use us as a perfect example here. So we're offering a course and a mentorship, right? Mm-hmm. Or anyone who is offering courses and mentorships, will this work for them? This seems like a perfect fit for that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, especially if you run a digital business, which is essentially mm-hmm. what you're doing, yep. this, is, this is it because nobody physically needs to be anywhere. Okay. You're not pushing papers around an office. So everything's digital. You have admin work, you have marketing work that needs to be done. Um, you know, we, we have a bunch of people we actually edit podcasts for okay. <laughs> and do all the editing. Um, <laughs> we do the posting, uh, I mean, paid but this ads. is the level nine. Is yes, that... correct. Okay. Virtual. Yeah. And that's because of the, the access to the staff that you, you kind of know and understand, right? Yep. Do they hire, mm-hmm. are you, are they pass through or are you guys managing it somehow? Is that the we client success? Them. Yeah. That's your sister's role, right? Okay. Yeah. So what we like to do in a perfect world is we manage the relationship with the virtual assistant. And the reason being is that they need an ecosystem of like-minded people who are similar to them. So a lot of times what happens if we were to do a pass through where we recruit and then we hand them off, 
Mm -hmm. they lose that cultural connection to teammates Mm -hmm. because now all of a sudden they're the people that show up. Yeah. Yeah. And they show up on the screen and then they're they're in a meeting, but they're on the screen and then it's like they're gone and nobody's there to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. When they run into a challenge, they don't have anybody to bounce ideas off of. Mm -hmm. So instead we have hundreds and hundreds of VAs that all work in a single ecosystem. They all share resources. They Mm -hmm. communicate with one another through our, you know, Slack, channels and communities, our own Facebook community, you know, with mm-hmm. them so that, you know, we could talk about birthdays and talk about events that are going on and things that happen. Like just the other day, there was a typhoon, you know, our teams in the Philippines, mm-hmm. there was a typhoon. Everybody's communicating. Everybody. Okay. Who's there? Who's there? Hey, this person's out. This one's got this. Oh, I live right by you. This happened. Mm-hmm. You can't have that if you're just one person working in, you know, it, with, with a company. So we love the ability to keep that culture and it makes people sticky. They stay mm-hmm. around. And so, and then we handle their payroll, we handle their HR, we handle all of that stuff so that Mm -hmm. businesses like yours don't have to. No, that's cool, man. That's really, really cool. What about from the marketing standpoint? Tell me like how you're serving your client base uh, from that perspective. That's called level nine, but do you have another digital marketing agency or I do? And it's completely different. has nothing. It's it's wedding booking system and we literally serve wedding venues. Gotcha. Um, we do happen to have a, another business that I started just cause it was kind of a, a moment of a wild hair at my ass. We'll call it. And mm-hmm. we have a campground digital, which is uh, halfway, not even built yet, but yet we still have clients that are, we've been with us for a couple of years. Um, mm-hmm. So campground digital is literally just doing marketing for campground. Yeah. I think I, I, you uh, picked up on that. Actually, <laughs> yeah. that's one of your newest things, which is cool. I like that. It's yeah. actually, I think it's a good direction, man. Definitely yeah, in real estate fun. related too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so it's pretty fun. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, so what advice do you have to give to someone such as myself? So I literally this morning, Chad and I go for a walk and I'm like, it's just so hard for me because I'm afraid of the quality I get from, you know, if I need somebody to write an article, because I'm a trained journalist, you know, so I'm like, okay, well, I need people to write articles <laughs> for me, right? And I'm like, it's, they all, and I've yep. had people, you know, I've outsourced my blog post before, and I get it, and it's pretty good, but I feel like I could do so much <laughs> better, right? <laughs> and so I'm like, how do I let go of this? Well, yeah. That's how the, do we uh, get the vision, right? These are people with real visions, wow. not like, oh, I'm carpet cleaning, yeah. right? Carpet cleaning is one thing like, okay, maybe you don't have a big vision. I'm not playing down on carpet cleaners, but it's a, it's something that's just like kind of almost a commodity almost right. Just clean carpets, not clean carpets. But when you're trying to get a message across like a real voice of an individual, like Lisa and I, we have some bigger plays that we have going on. We're trying to get our message out there. How does that apply? I think, uh, I think because of AI, it's easier than it's ever been. And I think mm-hmm. if you if you get decent, or you allow our team to do it for you, is get decent with building a persona. Mm-hmm. Who are you? What are you trying yep. to get? Like, what is your message? What are your mm-hmm. values? What tone yep. do you communicate in? If you if you can teach, if you can teach and communicate that well, we can leverage AI because we have what the we, persona. We we have what we call prompt engineers. All they do yep. is work on prompts. And they work on okay. creating personas and they work on creating the right tone and the right message. So mm-hmm. no matter what though, AI is going to pr- get you 80% there and then you put your sweet touch on it and voila. And so right. the way I always look at it, if, if it's, you know, if you're using a virtual staff, if you're using tech, whatever it is, the value is getting you close enough to where mm-hmm. you've shaved off. Let's call it that 80, 20, you can do 20% of the work. That's, that's going to give 80% of the result. All you have to do is, is shave off the 80% of time. And Mm -hmm. you just by doing that, you've made yourself more profitable, right? So shave off 80% of the time, let somebody else do it. And then you have your little micro piece and it might be 95, five, because you could get that close. And then you've got your little touch, you know, you're going to proofread. You're going to go Oh Nope. Tweak that, tweak that, tweak that done publish. And that's it. And nice. it's, it's, it's constantly getting better, right? Cause you're, oh, yeah. you're t- working on a team, right? Oh like yeah. This, these people that you're bringing in, they stay consistent with you. Is that true? Yes. Yeah. I've had people okay. who have, you know, moved through different areas of our company and taken different roles and grown. And, you know, we have people who are technically executives now who started out as just, mm-hmm. you know, they were a VA working with a client and now they run entire Gosh. departments in my company. 
And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, I mean, a- anything's possible. I, I always like to say when people think they're worried about quality overseas or they're worried about outsourcing to somebody else. It's a big, it is a big concern well, for most people. Of course. I, I 100% have experience. that concern. Like, especially like in yeah. the bookkeeping too, because when I was running the bookkeeping company, you know, I would have those, like people approach me like, oh, you know, we can get you bookkeepers to do the work for you. And I toyed around with it a little bit and I was like, eh, no, I don't want my clients having that quality of work. Again, I'm as you, right. as you can't tell them the we're, theme we're being here. The devil's advocate here I, I'm yeah. like I'm a control. I have to be in control. <laughs> well, and and here's okay. So that's a personality trait, right? Uh-huh. And yeah, the personality yeah, yeah. trait you do have to align yourself with people who can work well with that personality trait. So if you're gonna be mm-hmm. if you're gonna be the controlling, micromanaging, you're gonna that's gonna be very difficult to let go of things. You're right. So there's some, there's some personal work you're going to have to do because it doesn't matter if they were sitting next to you in the U S or if they're in the Philippines, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You still are going to have that same level of control, uh, you know, desire that, you know, that has to be let go. So I tell people to start with small stuff, like just start getting things off your plate, like just little stuff. It doesn't even matter what it is. It's you, you start looking at your to-do list for the day. How much of this actually makes me money? How much of this actually makes an impact? Okay, this one mm-hmm. item, get rid of it. Give it to somebody else. Oh, they, mm-hmm. they got it 70% complete the way you want? That's a 70% win, right? And now can you make a suggestion and have them get you to 100? And now all of a sudden you've figured out how to assign a task, how to work on revisions, and then now mm-hmm. you have a completed, you know, completed project or whatever it is. So I think that right. people need to practice, you know, just like decision-making. Decision making is like a muscle. You got to work at it to get good at it. And then, mm-hmm. you know, my wife always is like, how in the world do you make that many decisions in a single day? And, and I mean, we're talking decisions that affect hundreds of people's lives mm-hmm. in our company. And then if we trickle down to their families, we're talking thousands or, or 10,000 people. And it's my job to make a decision that's going to affect everybody. That's pretty high powered decision making. And if I don't get good at it, then you know, we run into challenges where we stall, we don't provide value, you know, kind of yeah. those things. So I have a really, really big uh, belief that outsourcing and delegating is simply a task. It, it's, it's a practice. It's something that you got to practice on. So our philosophies here, Joe, dude, I love chatting with you because you're kind of the epiphany of like, you know, our, our journey in, in what everything that we do is we want people to be remote. We want people to have flexibility, right? That's, it's not just about becoming an entrepreneur, but having that flexibility. And I think if a company like yours is helping people, even with n- traditional companies that would keep you locked, locked right. in, you're giving them the capacity now to like go remote and, and have that freedom and, and explore. You don't have to have desks and offices yep. and that kind of thing, which traditionally you did before. So that's super cool. And then, you know, stealing your life back, that's like stealing your time back. We talk about money. We talk about time. We talk about mental clarity. You just tapped into literally all three of those yeah. in that, like that brief conversation you had with Lisa about, you know, those, those um, things and how to do one little thing at a time. And freeing up that space just gives you more room to be. And so you, I think you answered the question perfectly. People with a vision, now you can focus on the vision yeah. and the messaging and make sure that you're the perfect filter between that and, and the people, right? Because you want your vision to be heard loud and right. clear, right? So, and I like that you talked about AI and personas. Very, very cool. We're playing with that already. We built a few personas, but we're still, still very, very new to that. As we should be. I mean, AI just popped, up, came out yesterday or yeah, whatever, right? right? So, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So the fact that you're that deep in it is is really cool, man. You're you're definitely moving and shaking. Well, I think, so I think if we want to stay, if we want to stay on the forefront, we've got to keep at it. We have got to keep practicing, um, looking at new things. You know. Is AI going to take everything away from everybody? No, it's going to create something different. And so, you know, mm-hmm. we've got to be on the on the offense when it comes to using these tools, using this stuff. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to go so deep into something that uh, just isn't in your your area of expertise. And so, I don't think AI is the end all be all. I think that there's so many opportunities to have real relationships with people. And have mm-hmm. actual, you know. Well, the, we're going to have time for it now. We're not well, going to be writing go, right? copy. And, that, and that's part I'm of it. I'm serious. Yeah, and this I, is a real thing. That's right. You're saying the, you're saying the yeah. thing. And so people are going, oh, AI is going to be bad. 
I'm like, AI is going to give you so much freedom if mm -hmm. you learn how to leverage it and you position yourself well for it. Because guess what? Yeah. Here's what I can promise you. It ain't going anywhere. No, it's not leaving. No, it's... So you can either sit there and complain about it or you can adopt it and yeah. take the freedom that it's going to provide. For yeah, you. yeah, yeah. We, we definitely need to adopt it. Personally, um, we're playing with it enough to know like how to adopt it. And I think that's for a lot of people where they're all at right yeah. now. Unless you're literally in the game, everyone's just toying with yeah. it right now. And no one knows really where how, the potential of it. Everyone likes to pretend like they yeah. know, like I'm, I'm the king of AI. I see it all <laughs> the time. Oh yeah, like, no. The, the day it have, came out, just, everybody became experts. You're playing with it just like everyone else. You're still yeah. just playing I'm with like, it. hey, all you NFT guys, now you're AI experts. <laughs> how funny. Yeah, I'm like, I know, right? Like, yeah. well, you get know, out of here. <laughs> they were, uh, it was real estate, then it was, you know. Crypto. The, the, the and... Cryptos and like, and listen, that's cool. Go for it, guys. Yeah. Like we're all learning. Sure. We're all trying to grow. Absolutely. And, be, and why not? Why not move through all those phases? It doesn't matter. But another thing that we like to focus on in our podcast, obviously firing your boss, right? This tool, I'm, I'm going to call it a tool. Is that okay? Sure. We call level Absolutely. nine like a tool. For business owners, let's just, let's use an example. Where do you think the most powerful play could be made? Say you don't know, like you want to launch a business and you don't know how to do, like, let's say bookkeeping, or you don't know how to do uh, copywriting. Um, but, but there's still a lot of people out there that need help with these tasks, yeah. right? Even if it, you're, even if you are using AI, they don't even have time to do the AI. Yeah. So there's a place there oh, for you for still. Sure. There's opportunity right? so, everywhere you turn your head. So how can someone take and if they're thinking of like, you know, how, how could someone like you, what, or what kind of advice could you give our listeners right now on how to use this tool to make that leap from A to B, right? Because you talked about the, the what did you call it though? You called it the, you b took like eight months to build the roadmap or something. What, yeah. How did you put that? Well, yeah. So, I mean, we built a framework. I, I built framework. a framework okay. that uh, just happens to work really, really well, especially if you're just mm -hmm. getting going. Um, I think for people who are trying to start a business from ground zero is you mm -hmm. have to realize what's the most important aspects of starting that business. And so, I don't know, throw out a, uh, a type of a business somebody might be starting and then we'll kind of play off. Well, of that. let's use a bookkeeping company, okay. right? Let's just say we're starting a remote bookkeeping company. Perfect. And, what's the first you thing you do need? Payroll and different services. Yeah, like so that. So what's yeah. the first thing you need? Bookkeepers. No, you need those second. You don't, why do you need bookkeepers? You have no customers. Okay. So any customers, so you, like you have nothing first. to fulfill. Right. Yeah. Yeah. True. And so the way that I look at it is I go, okay, the number one thing that you need, you can't build a business without any money. So, mm -hmm. But the fastest way to get money is to sell the thing that you're going to off is that you're going to sell. Mm -hmm. You sound like Alex or Mosey, right? right. Now, brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what? Here's the funny part is that everybody has said this for decades. You know, oh, I, I, I know. love, it's not, uh, see, it's not a I'm secret, a huge but, fan of, yeah. of Jeff Walker. Like I think Jeff Walker is phenomenal and he has, mm -hmm. you know, his, the launch guy, right? Well, he's like, yeah, yeah. so launch it, sell it, then create it in real time. And mm -hmm. so the easiest way to do that is as a, you know, bookkeeping business. Hey, listen, I know something about bookkeeping. I guess if I'm going to start a bookkeeping business, you better know something, but you go to them and mm -hmm. you say, Hey, listen, we're, we're launching this business. We'd like you to be customer number one, two, three, four, five. And what you're going to do is, is we're going to bring you in and we're going to let you obviously at a lower rate, we're going to let you become our, our uh, founding, you know, our founding clients. We'll grandfather mm -hmm. in your rates but you're gonna work with us as we grow this business and, and this and that, and you're gonna provide us good feedback so that we can make this experience incredible for you. Would you be willing to do that? And if they have a relationship with you, yeah, absolutely. Okay, great, boom, mm -hmm. here's your, now, now they're paying you. Okay, great, now, right. how do you fulfill it? <laughs> so now you put whatever's gonna be in place. Hopefully you have somebody in mind who's gonna be your bookkeeper and they're gonna be, mm -hmm. okay, great. So you took the money, within X amount of time, you need to fulfill the service and get it started, and now you put somebody in place for that. Right. But here's the biggest challenge where everybody falls off is typically they want to do the fulfillment themselves. Right. So then what happens pretty to typical, the sales? Right. Yes. In almost everything. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. I want to start a construction company. I'm going to do all the work. That's I'm going right. to start flipping houses. I'm going to do all the work. It's like, hold on. So, buddy. Yeah. so how do you continue to sell and generate new revenue if you're mm -hmm. fulfilling the old revenue? So right. here, can't. here, there's two, there's two, that's two roles. That's yeah, two, two different, different roles, roles and both of them are equally valuable for sure. And so my take on it is that you need constant opportunities. Mm -hmm. Somebody else needs to do fulfillment and 
it's your vision, so nobody can explain it better than you. So you sit in the middle. So the way that I started, um, for example, when I relaunched my agency after a, a huge failure, and I said, I'm gonna do one thing for one niche. I'm gonna work with wedding venues, and we're gonna do this very specific marketing system that I developed. And we're gonna sell one thing to one niche, that's it. I had one VA do prospecting, and all his job was, get me communicating with my prospects. Here's who I want, here's how to go find them, get conversations started. I will take over and handle it from there. Mm -hmm. So then I step in, I have these conversations, boom, we close a sale. On the next side, I have a fulfillment, I know exactly how to fulfill the service. So mm -hmm. I taught a team of VAs to do it. Hey, my ads guy, you're gonna run ads, this is how you do it, this is the strategy, here's the, the, the type of copy. Uh, if you need creative, the client will provide it. Okay, great, we're good. Here's how you do the marketing automation fulfillment. This is exactly what you do. Here's why you do it, da 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 da, da. That's that. Okay, so now we have prospecting, sales, fulfillment. That's kind of it to start. Mm -hmm. We went from zero to 109,000 a month in four months doing just that. Wow. Then we went, okay, let's double down. So now four months later, we got over to two, uh, like 220 a month. Mm -hmm. And then we went, okay, great. That can be replicated. So then I said, let's do the same thing with another business, which was level nine virtual. We didn't really mm -hmm. have clients. We kind of had a few that we refer, we just had clients that were kind of clients already. And so I said, let's scale this up. So we did the exact same thing and we broke a million a month in, I think it was less than six months. Dang. And love it. And That's so, great, but now That's then solid. you get to a point where you go, okay, there's money coming in. So now we have a new problem. Now we have money. We don't know what to do with it. So you have a finance team. Mm -hmm. And now you have somebody handle billing, you have accounts receivable, you have, mm -hmm. you know, if there's payroll, if there's any of those things, now you have that in place. Well, then you start to build a team and you grow bigger. And now all of a sudden you go, well, now there's human beings that we need to build relationships with and maintain. So you, we put in HR. And then if I'm still, and so the way I relieve myself from this is if I'm in the middle of it still, and I have any part in everything I just mentioned, I need to get out. I hire salespeople. I hire what I call an integrator. Well, I don't call it that, but you know, many books do. Um, mm -hmm. I get to be the visionary. So I call myself a strategic advisor. I'm a strategic advisor and I'm an investor in my companies. Mm -hmm. And I have an integrator that operates and makes sure that the vision that I set forth is carried out. So is this integrator one person or multiple people? In each company, there's somebody separate. Okay. Cause I know Chad, yeah. that's like what you've been saying you want. An integrator. Yeah, an integrator. I need, I need integrator. You need yeah, somebody sure. that basically, if I say, okay, our, our plan for the next 60 days is we're gonna, we're gonna you know, grow sales, right? Yep. So that's gonna be a sales function, right? There's gonna be advertising involved, there's gonna be some marketing involved, there's gonna be sales involvement. The fulfillment, mm -hmm. we're not worried about fulfilling more service for more people. What we're lo looking at doing is this. The integrator is then all over that crew and making sure that everybody's in alignment with the vision that I set forward. I like and it. And so she's watching KPIs, she's setting up reporting. So then I get to step in and go, okay, what happened? What happened over the past 30 days? Oh, mm -hmm. this, this, and this. Okay, I think we should probably tweak this. Okay, let's go. And then she's right. the one integrating and making sure that that occurs. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. I know, that was a how lot. Do I get, how do I get one of those? <laughs> you you <laughs> got to hire one. Here we go. You just, you just hit me up and let's do it. All yeah. right. All right. Uh, how does one hit you up, brother? Uh, how do we do that, So, Joe? oh my God, there's all these different channels, but let's just do level9virtual.com. Yeah. So level9virtual.com. Mm -hmm. And then my email is joe at level9virtual.com. Super easy. All right. And your OnlyFans is what? Oh, it's, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I like joesfeet.com. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Well, come see my integrator. Yeah. All right. So, um, <laughs> there you go. That's a, that's a new one. <laughs> cool, cool, man. That's awesome, man. Great, great content. Cool stuff, man. You're definitely moving and shaking. What's What's next for you? Like, are you? You got a lot of work ahead of you. Sounds well, like we with this just new launch, we right? just launched this new business. Uh, so the next thing is is to solidify and really dial in our sales process because mm -hmm. going to going from people we know clients, past clients to uh, the, just the general public, general audience is a yeah. little bit of a different sales process. And so I think over the next few weeks, we'll make sure that we have a really st simple streamlined sales process so our team can follow it without a hitch. And as soon as mm -hmm. we see that, 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 you know, that's working, 
we've already got fulfillment dialed in. Now it's sales. As soon as we get that dialed in, I'm out. And then right. I will take a, Who knows? a few months Who knows off. At that point? Well, and then it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of watching businesses, but, um, you know, we got a couple trips planned. Um, so I've only got two weeks left before we take off on vacation and then uh -huh. we come back and it's like, kids are back, you know, they're starting school again and all that. Yeah. But you know, when winter hits, I kind of don't work much in the winter cause I snowmobile every day. Ah. And so, okay. Where at, where do you guys, where do you go? I, I'm in Montana. So I go right outside of big okay. sky. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's so between really cool. that and West Yellowstone, we, we ride at least a few days a week. Yeah, nice. no, that's some of the that's some of the best terrain for sure. Oh, Lisa, you've amazing. been up to that West Yellowstone mm -hmm. to snowmobile, haven't oh, you? Yeah. yeah. Really? <laughs> well, yeah. you guys, we might have to do a little uh, a little sesh on the on the mountain. Yeah, who knows where this relationship will blossom oh, into? Oh, well, now sure, that I know man. you snowmobile, I'm going to force it. Well, as long as it's a, my... it has to be a nice <laughs> sunny day, or you won't see me out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's a lot just of those there for today. the Instagram pictures, Joe. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, you know what's actually fun is to create content while you're up on the mountain. Oh, That's yeah. Sweet. Right. So, so we'll do that. We'll have somebody with a camera. One person has a camera. We create a video, con you know, a bunch of that. And so mm -hmm. we've used that mm -hmm. in ad copy, uh, you know, in ad creative and stuff. It's been pretty cool. Yeah, we did that. That's we cool, took man. a trip to Canada this year to Banff. Mm hmm and, uh, yeah. we, Oh, see, thing. that's beautiful yeah. there. Yeah, we filmed yeah. some content. Where are there. you guys located right now? Las Vegas. Oh, okay, cool. I'll be yeah. there in November oh, awesome. for a conference. Okay. Yeah. What, what are you going to? So in the wedding industry, there's a huge conference called Wedding MBA. So mm -hmm. Merchant okay. Business Academy. And so um, I usually speak, we have an exhibit and we s just sell. And that's like our big sales push for the year. And then we're pretty much, you know, coasting for the rest of the year. Yeah. Very yes, cool. yes, yes, yes. So as far as like in our what we like to try to cover, obviously we've went over like, how do you steal your life back? Which, yeah. you know, we went into that heavy firing your boss. What about like living a life full of purpose, right? And we, we look at it from a certain perspective. Everyone has their own uh, vision of what like purpose looks like to them. But the way that we look at it is when you start working, like you, you consider yourself in service mm -hmm. at some point, right? Like you've created a community of people, whether it be your fa immediate family or your companies now, now you are in service to them and that creates purpose, Correct. right? And so that's, that's what we believe in our philosophy here. How does that resonate with you? And the big question I think and what we like to tap into is why do you think having that mindset, right? Cause that's a mindset it, thinking on that level that you're the, that you're in service to the community that, that you support. How does that help and benefit you as a business owner, entrepreneur, or do you even feel it's important at all? Well, it, it's a hundred percent important. And the, the way that you get to that point, I think I probably have a little bit of a different, uh, path to get there is that I think that the, the first thing that's going to be most important is you have to take care of yourself mm -hmm. and that's in business. That's in life, you know, whatever. I, I can't provide good service to my children and my wife. If I can't take care of myself, if I don't feel like I'm my best, if I'm the best Joe that I could possibly be. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. That's, that's me. That's getting rest. That's doing the things that, that I enjoy doing so that I, I have this energy and I have this, you know, this, this sense of accomplishment. And I think you mm -hmm. start, start with that. And if you could do that on a daily basis with whatever that means to you, whether it's meditating, walking, exercise, it, well, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Then, then I think that you can go and, and, you know, and I think money making is a huge part of that. I think that if you're not earning money, it is very hard to feel accomplished enough oh, to then you're, deliver. You're, you're, you're poking at Lisa in the cage right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah and so she's I, been developing so much for content and, and vision right now. And it's been tough for her because it takes a long, long time to develop these plans, right? You absolutely. know that firsthand, Joe. Absolutely. And I, and I think, so, but, but I think that financial resources improve your opportunity to make a greater mm -hmm. impact. And so, that can yes. start with your children, right? Yep. I mean, for, for lack of a better <laughs> example, why do people who have wealth send their kids to private schools? Right. Mm -hmm. It's just an opportunity. That's all it is. Yep. And financial yep. resources allow that. And so, you know, you can give your family experiences, but then you can take that and you can go a step outside of that and go, okay, well, what about my community? You know, we live in a mm -hmm. very tiny little community here, but we give my wife's on the, the board of the boosters club. Um, you know, we sit on boards for all kinds of things. We're part of this, you know, this community center, um, outreach program. We're doing a lot of stuff within our community. So then you take mm -hmm. that and how does that look at, you know, when you get to a, a 
you know, a bigger level and a bigger level. And where do you donate mm-hmm. your time? Where do you donate your resources? What things are passionate that you can, you can be a part of. But again, coming all the way back, it, it's like building businesses give, in my opinion, give me the opportunity to then impact more and more people. And for, you know, to, to kind of sum it all up, the number one impact that I feel like we're really able to contribute is the fact that in the Philippines, the average home has two or three generations living under one roof. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very often. If we hire one person, they happen to be the only person in three generations working. Our, our salary supports anywhere from two It could be two people. It could be 20 people. And then when you compound that out over four, five, 600 VAs, the impact that we're having is gigantic. And so my mission with the company shifted from client services to no, now it's about team services. We provide value to people in the Philippines primarily. It could be Venezuela. It could be wherever, but primarily it's people in the Philippines who have Mm -hmm. a culture that's different than ours. And we create Mm -hmm. opportunity for them to work from home, be around their family, earn a great living, provide and allow them to thrive. And that became a huge part of our mission. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool, man. Good for you and your wife. And uh, I love that you're what you're doing with everything and even the lives that you're touching here locally in your, you know, immediate circle, especially our listeners today. I'm sure you've in some way inspired somebody somewhere. And I like to kind of leave with a couple of things, but I don't know if you're a fan of James Allen, but I love it. So you are today where your thoughts have brought you. You will be tomorrow where your thoughts take you. And so with Joe's story and, you know, his businesses and where he came from, what he's really saying is, hey, guys, take charge of your life, unlock your true potential, whatever lies within you. Uh, you know, you don't have to do all of it on your own. Build that team. You know, what did you say? It was the 80-20 rule you were playing with there, right? Yeah. And so yeah. stay with your thoughts, people. Use tools like meditation, journaling, walking. Stick to the plan and get a plan. And maybe you can agree with me here, Joe. Get a plan so big it's worth dying for. Oh, yeah. If you don't have big dreams, there's not much to get up for in the morning. And I think that what you think is a big dream, if you 10x it, you'll be even more motivated. Right. Because you, would, you, would you agree that like you should at least have something worth dying for? And if that's your family, great. But oh, make sure. Yes. Or are you just going to turn back around when things get hard? No, no, you, you've got to be willing to, to die for something. And, uh, you know, Will, Will Smith had, and whether people love him or hate him, he had a very interesting thing on how he became basically like the top actor mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. Hollywood, you know, and he says, because if you and I both get on a treadmill, I will die before I'll let you mm. beat me. Right. And it was like, whoa, okay. Because he goes, no, I will be the greatest. There is no, there's nothing you can mm-hmm. say about that. And I'll die before I let right. anybody else get right. You that's know, beat me. very well. I was like, that's, well put, that's right. pretty and powerful. It's the philosophy behind yeah. that really is that, that, that what Correct. he's trying to teach. Yeah. So this has been awesome, man. And I'd, I'd love to actually, Lisa, you had a, three or four good questions. Is there something you wanted to play with before we, we close it out today? Well, I think I was, I wanted, I was kind of curious about your podcast that you said that you, your outreach nation. Oh no, no. Okay. So, so outsource nation is a podcast that I am going to start. Everybody keeps saying you need to start a podcast. Just talk about outsourcing. Mm-hmm. Um, I swear 2023, <laughs> late in 2023, I think. I think it's what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the winter as Mm -hmm. my time to launch it. And actually like, because you know, my team kind of knows like Joe's not going to really be in the day to day. Um, so it'll be a good time for me to go, okay, one day a week, we power through, we do two, you know, two episodes, three episodes and just, you know, just really stack, you know, and then, um, and then start releasing. So outsource nation is, uh, what we're going to be moving to. We already built a website that is kind of getting started, but we're going to grow and, and, uh, and really work on the brand over time. I think, I think it'll be a good one for people. And I think then again, the goal is going to be to build a community of people who are interested in outsourcing, creating freedom, time, freedom, financial freedom, all of those things so that they can have their life back. I want people to have their life back. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody should be able to do what, what we do, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, middle of a work day, hop on a podcast, have some fun, yeah. talk to some Amen. cool people. You know, nobody should have to be stuck behind a desk and grinding right. away. 
Right. There is an escape, right? You can escape. Yes, for sure. It's the other side of the fence. So, well, cool. Thanks for listening. Always hanging out with us, meeting the guests and uh, taking these journeys with us. Hopefully you like our topics. Hopefully, you know, I, I, we really work hard to make sure we're bringing good content to you. So we encourage you guys to embrace the principles of remote work stealing your life back, firing your boss, and living a life full of purpose. Remember, the power to shape your destiny lies within you, people. Keep dreaming big. Never stop striving for extraordinary. Just like uh, Will Smith said, you know, uh, he would die before he'd let you be. <laughs> and that isn't for everyone, but find your threshold, guys, and, and just make it big enough and worth it. And I have an old saying, I tell people like, or help them identify this same thing. And then I ask them like, what is your goal or your dream? Right. And I say, well, if you could have that one thing, right. The snap of a fingers, here it is. It's yours. All right. But you have to do this other thing, which is like, let's just say you had to walk 10,000 miles for it to be yours. But at the end of that 10,000 miles, and all you have to do is walk, walking is not hard, is it? <laughs> yeah. Just walk, but you have to walk 10,000 miles. And they say that you walk about 20,000 wow. miles in a lifetime, right? So if that's true, if you had a dream, a big dream, and all you had to do was walk 10,000 miles, right? You'd ask those three people, yeah. would they do it? The first person would say, no way. The second person would, man, maybe think about it. Third person starts walking. But you, ask, you have to ask yourself, who are you? And then if you're number one, the first person says, no way. More than likely, your dream's not big enough to equate yep. to that 10,000-mile walk, right? So you have to ask yourself, are my dreams big enough? And so, you know, I play around with that philosophy with people a lot right. because nobody's asking those hard questions like, what am I willing to do? So, yeah, anyway, that's why I say keep drink, dreaming big and never stop striving for uh, extraordinary because you got to – that's been the biggest challenge for me is because I was a contractor mm -hmm. and I came from a blue-collar family and – my dad worked the same company 35 years. End of story, that wasn't a life for me. And I, uh, my first goal is I was going to be a supercross racer, <laughs> riding motocross, oh, right? Oh, dang. I was, a, I'm in, I was in my, I was like 10 or 11 years old, and that's what I wanted to do. My family couldn't afford, you know, that right. level, you know, for their kids. Yeah. It's just it's way too expensive. Couldn't make that happen. Anyway, next thing was I'm going to be a rock star. And so, and I went after these things. And by the time I was at that age, I was able to do it on my own. And I had some pretty good success with it. But I've always been that guy who's like, go big. Yeah. Like, think about it bigger. Don't, I'm not going to settle for anything. So those two dreams I had both, you know, didn't come completely true. But I love who I am because of it and that I, ch that I chased them. A lot of people just feel like, oh, well, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do the 10,000-mile hike. Yeah. Well, at least try. Start hiking. You never know. Absolutely. I agree with you. Absolutely. Joe, it's been super cool, man. You got all sorts of cool companies. I know someone's yeah, going to find powers. you. <laughs> and superpowers. Right, my outsourcing superpower. Well, yes. Yeah, that's what yeah. we're calling them, right? So I think, Lisa, what do you think? We'll maybe, um, maybe get a consult from Joe there sure. and see if he can get me an integrator for some of my projects. That'd be sweet. Definitely.